All right, uh, 7.1 now. Um, let's take a look at 7.1. And with 7.1 here, um, 7.1 is um, nth roots and rational exponents. So I want to take a look at a couple examples here just to make sure that you uh, get all this. Um, we are on the, the same page here. Um, there's different ways we can rewrite these. Um, if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as 81, right? And I could have that to the third, and then on the outside, we'll actually scratch that off. I could write that as 81 to the third, all of that to the one-fourth power. Or I could rewrite this as 81 to the one-fourth power, all to the third. Now, I know you're probably sitting there wondering, well, what's the importance of this? Why would I want to write it one way over the other? Well, do you know what 81 to the third is in your head? Because I know I don't. So the point is, I'm not going to do that one. However, can you think of four numbers that are exactly the same that when you multiply them together will give you 81? Um, I can. Um, three, right? Three times three times three times three is 81. So 81 to the one-fourth is three. So really what this problem is saying is it's three to the third. And three to the third, we know what that is. That is 27. So the point is, this problem equals 27, and it equals 27 because of how we wrote it. It made our job easier to solve this problem. Okay, so looking at the next one here, um, because it's a negative exponent, I'd have to write this on the bottom, so I get 256 to the 3 fourth. Okay, so now that's taken care of. Um, we know it's going to be a fraction with something on the bottom. We understand that, but um, let's just worry about the denominator right now. Let's just worry about this. How can I rewrite that? I can rewrite the bottom as 256 um, to the fourth, and then that uh, to the third, or I can write that as 256 to the third to the one-fourth. Well, once again, do you know what 256 to the third power is? Um, I got no clue. So that way will take forever. And once again, that will give you the right answer, but if you have no idea what 256 to the third is, it's not going to help you. Whereas over here, can you think of four numbers that will give you 256? I can. Four times four times four times four, right? That will multiply to give you 256. So really, what I have is a 4 to the third power. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So I don't get 64 as my answer. Keep in mind, all I did was find the denominator. I found this. This on the bottom was 64. So really, my answer is 1 over 64. That's what my actual answer is to that problem, 1 over 64. And then the last one here, um, rewrite and solve. Um, when I'm sitting here looking at this, if I wanted to, just so you can see what you can do with roots, so you can see an example. Um, I have negative 64. Instead of writing it to the, the third root, I could rewrite this to the one-third, and then take that to the fourth power. right? And if I wanted to keep going, I could rewrite this as negative 64 to the four-thirds power. And that doesn't help us solve anything. This is just me showing you how you can rewrite that in terms of fractions. Okay, But let's look here on the inside. Can you think of three numbers that when you multiply them together will give you negative 64? Well, I can. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 gives you negative 64. Um, so basically, the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. So really what this problem is saying is, what is negative 4 to the 4th power? So what is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4? That's what it's asking. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So that means that's also 16. So really this is 16 times 16, which is 256. So your answer is 256 for that problem.